it's me ghost critic and it's time for another well that happened video um, i've chosen one of the huge stories of last week to talk about and uh, it involves dc comics of course it does um just over like four and a half years ago um, DC made the brave decision of resetting its uh, universe and they called it the New 52. Um, it was embraced and rejected um, at equal measure and now four and a bit years later it's going away. Uh, whether it's convergence, divergence, um, come June, we are going to see 24, 25 new titles appearing in the DC line. And it's been promised to be inclusive, accessible and contemporary. Uh, I guess this is a way to draw in new readers. I'm sure that's what the company tagline uh, is. Uh, I wonder if it's to appease the New 52 haters uh, because they are bringing back some um, characters that we've yet to see in the New 52, uh, some long forgotten favourites. Um, now I know Dan Didio said this was going to be um, not necessarily an event, but um, the basis of this was that it was going to be story will trump continuity. Now, I have problems with this in, in its ambiguity and its kind of nonsensical nature. Um, there should always have been story. Um, story should be above all anyway regarding a comic book series. So... It should always be there. That just seemed to be a basic thing of telling a story. A story should be there. Um, with, in regards to continuity, um, I'm not the most kind of like continuity friendly person. I'm not too bothered. Again, I think they should stick to the basics and not try and re reinvent so many times. Um, but there has to be a, a, an element of continuity within a series. And it's something that comics has had a problem with for many, many years. And in some ways they are to blame in that they made it far too complicated. They... Um, and the need to have these kind of uh, big events that either rebooted or reset or restarted universes needed to happen so uh, they could have almost a kind of carte, carte blanche uh, starting point because even the writers, even the company themselves, couldn't make sense of the history of their characters that had gone previously before. Um, but I do think there is an element of laziness here as well. Uh, but the vagueness of the idea of continuity in this kind of little phrase that we keep hearing um, Dan Didio having said, um, I just... I don't know. You, you don't find this in TV series. You know, you don't have some uh, a bunch of people in, say, season four of, I don't know, say Buffy, for example, um, that went, oh, God, I don't understand any of this. I don't want to have to go back and watch the last three series. I want them to reboot it, restart it. Um, in regards to films, I think it's, it's a new... Um, a new kind of element that's come in very recently, the whole idea of rebooting. Um, but this seems to be predominantly in the kind of comic book genre anyway. And I think that has more to do with the more general population who are, are watching the comic book movies now. And I need a basis um, to understand where these characters have come from. And again, to make it that much more uh, of a contemporary feel to them. Something that they can identify with um, in their surroundings as it is now. Now, there were 20, 24, 25 new titles um, 
solicited that are going to come out in June. I thought we'd go quickly down the list. I did notice, and I mentioned this on Sleepy Reader, Damien's uh, channel, when he was talking about um, the Multiversity uh, guidebook that came out and uh, the the titles that are uh, are due to come out in this June extravaganza. The, looking at the characters, looking at the titles they're pushing forward, I don't see a great deal of longevity in some of the titles that they've picked. And I understand that not every comic book has to be like a huge series that goes on for hundreds and hundreds of issues, but because they brought out so many, because the readership is so spread out and some of these characters are so niche that I don't see them lasting regardless of how long they um, thought they would in the first place. So let's quickly go down. I'll, I'll go through all the titles that have been solicited and just kind of add, add on the creators of that, um, of that particular series. And just if I'm interested in any of them, um, to be honest, because I've looked down the list and I'm like, oof, I don't know. So, fortunately, Newsarama in their article put them all in alphabetical order for me. Um, there are some um, screenshots that I'm going to throw in there. I'll try and put them next to the comics, uh, the titles that um, I'll go in order with. Um, but there hasn't been much in the way of... Um, visual um, identifiers for these titles and some that they haven't even really told us what they're going to be about. So beginning right at the, uh, right at the top we've got Batmite written by Dan Jurgens with art by Corn Howell. Um, I see this as a very kind of kid friendly book. Um, I won't be interested in it at all and I don't see it lasting. Uh, of course, there's got to be another Batman title, so it's Batman Beyond. This will probably be the futuristic set in the future version of Batman. Again, written by Dan Jurgens with Bernard Chang on art. Not interested. Black Canary by Brendan Fletcher and Annie Wu. Uh, it's always good to see more female-fronted uh, solo titles. Again, is Black Canary, though, that much of a popular character that people will pick it up? Uh, not for me, I know very little about Black Canary and really not very interested. Uh, another strange choice for a solo title is Bizarro, written by Heath Corson with Gustavo Duarte um, on art. Uh, not interested. Um, Constantine, with the addition now of The Hellblazer in the title, uh, written by Ming Doyle with Riley Rossimo on art. Um, I think they're just trying to fool and draw in those Vertigo Hellbra Hellblazer readers by adding that little bit on the back. I don't honestly think this is going to be any better than it already is. It's still going to be kind of constantine light. There's going to be none of that gritty griminess that we had um, in, the, uh, in the Vertigo series. So I wasn't bothered about the Constantine title when it turned up in the new DC-52. I'm unlikely, very unlikely to be interested in it now. Um, Cyborg by David O. Walker with Ivan Rees on art, character that doesn't interest me in the slightest. Um, not much to say on this because we don't know what it is, but it's called Dark Universe by James Tinian and Ming Doyle. Dark Universe, maybe this is the title that's going to replace uh, Justice League Dark because that does not appear in the titles that are not being cancelled from the the most current New 52 titles because they are still obviously keeping a great deal of their base titles. Uh, so don't really know anything about that. Uh, Doctor Fate by Paul Levitz and Sonny Liu. Uh, Doctor Fate is a character that I have an interest in but never have collected anything of very much of him. I probably have maybe three or four issues randomly um, bought from 50p boxes. But it's a character, it's, it's that whole kind of mystic, magical side of the DC Universe which I actually love. Um, so maybe if I hear enough good stuff about it um, and read a little bit more before it starts about what it's going to be based on, 
probably might pick that up. Um, we have a title called Doomed by Scott Lobdell and Javier Fernandez. I guess that's something to do with Doom, Superman's kind of, uh, one of Superman's villains, I guess. I can't really say much about that. Earth 2 with the moniker Society attached to it now by Daniel H. Williams and Jorge Jimenez. Um, I wonder if this is bringing in the Justice, Justice Society of America. Uh, that would be great because I loved the pre-52, the last volume of it. Um, it was a great run. And although I doubt they will address all those hanging threads that they left the series off before they went into the new 52, it'd still be great to have um, just a society of America back on the shelves. Um, Green Lantern Lost Army by Cullen Bunn and Jesus Sayers. Um, I dropped Green Lantern a long time ago, um, so I can't imagine me uh, picking up a new Green Lantern book, whatever that may be about. Uh, Harley Quinn Power Girl, kind of a team up book by the sounds of it, by Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor. Um, yeah, I'm not interested in the Harley Quinn books. Uh, it still amazes me that that character is so popular now. Um, where the connection between her and Power Girl happens from is anyone's guess. Um, Justice League 3001 by Keith Giffen and Howard Porter. Future Justice League, I guess. Um, Justice League of America by Brian Hitch. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Brian can cope with a monthly book and keep up to date with it. Um, didn't Justice League, I can't remember if Justice League of America is still going now. Um, I don't, you really hear a lot of people talking about it. I don't think it was incredibly well received um, when it did have the, its new 52 kind of incarnation. Uh, Martian Manhunter by Rob Williams and Ben Oliver. Um, another character wasn't exactly hugely received in the um, Stormwatch series because that didn't last very long. Um, so another interesting solo book choice. Um, along with also Midnighter by Steve Orlando and Aiko. Um, I, just, I just don't know if that will work. Uh, is, is this DC's first uh, solo book with a gay character? Uh, as heading it. Um, I'm not sure, maybe someone else out there could um, maybe tell me. Uh, Mystic You, which apparently is a tentative title by Elisa Quitney and a Morissette. Um, Mystic You could be anything. It, again, is this the replacement for Justice League Dark? The mystic side of it does make it sound like it's going to be the, the magic, the supernatural side of... Um, of the DC Universe, but without more information on that, who knows. Um, a surprising choice, I thought, was Omega Men, written by Tom King and Barnaby B Beginder. Um, I'm not saying Omega Men was a bad series. I have almost a full run of the original series. It was kind of DC's answer to um, a kind of X-Men team, really. Um, but... Will anybody even know, given that this is meant to draw in new readers, will anyone even know who the Omega Men originally were? Hmm. Uh, another one which is a weird kind of introduction solo title for someone new coming into the DC Universe is Prez, based on, I think it was a, a three or four issue miniseries back in the 70s. We've got that written by Mark Russell with artwork by Ben Caldwell. Really not interested. Uh, Red Hood and Arsenal by Scott Lobdell and Dennis Medry. Um, the bad boys of DC. Um, is it going to be um, that kind of book? Uh, of course, um, another Batman related title, I guess, and that's Robin, son of Batman, um, written by Pat Gleason. I'm guessing this is to replace Batman and Robin uh, because that has been cancelled. Um, will this have Robin with his new superpowers or will he have been depowered by the time <laughs> this new title turns up? Garth Ennis and John McRae joined back up again for a title called Section 8. Not much information about that out, so that could just be absolutely anything. 
Um, again, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor are bringing out a Starfire issue. Um, they seem to have softened her up somewhat. Um, I know there was a big kind of hoo-ha about how sexualized she was, but uh, that just showed quite a lot of ignorance from a lot of readers from uh, how Starfire has always been portrayed in DC as a very overtly sexual character. Um, finally, we have a title called We Are Robin by Lee Bermejo and Rob Haynes. Again, just if you look at the cover of it or, you know, this what could potentially be the cover, is this going to be uh, a Robin version of Batman Incorporated? Are we going to get multiple versions of Robin? Um, who knows? The... Dis the um, the kind of descriptions of what's going to happen with these titles are very sparse. Um, so these are just kind of like first impressions of what the titles could possibly be. Um, I don't actually collect outside of really the bat titles a great many DC um, titles. Many of the ones I initially started collecting have all since been cancelled or are about to be cancelled. Uh, obviously JL Dark is not in anywhere of this new uh, DC universe that we're going to get in June. We already know Swamp Thing is ending with issue 40. He doesn't seem to be anywhere in the new uh, DCU, whatever this will, will, will be made of. Um, so it, it hasn't really affected my DC collecting that much um, and of those 24, 25 comics I can only really see me maybe potentially getting maybe two or three of them uh, just as a little taster to see what we are going to be um, confronted with. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen the solicitations for these. If you're interested in, in many more of them, let me know in the comment section below what kind of titles have um, perked your interest. Um, but here's to June and yet another new DC Universe. Thank you all for watching. This is Ghost Critic. If you like this video and want to watch any more of mine, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. Give my video a big thumbs up and uh, just throw some comments down below. We'll have a chat later. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.